So that's where we always try to make front to back a balanced system, and then now we're looking at more of a package system. You know, how do how do the the bars and the stem and the wheels and the tires and all that that package, you know, how does that talk to itself? Yeah. You know, and one thing has to complement the other thing. Have you ever seen a regression in yeah. the design? Yeah. Of, let's say the 2007. That was a bike that I really liked. You might say, for yeah. just ch chucking up a number. Yeah. And then the bike evolves, and you're at 2017, and and you you keep saying this one's better than the last. This one's better than the last. Do you then get to 2017 and think I might ride 2007 again, and and then suddenly yeah. think oh shit, actually that's a nicer bike. Does well, that, so we actually does did that, that make sense? for. Um, but, the first Amanda, we actually did that. We took 2003 5.2s, and so we, we we went as far back as we could find frames. Yes. Right, and yes. then we just did the traditional tour stiffness numbers. Yes. And then retested them and see, okay, well, everybody said to your point, this bike, this one year was amazing. I loved it. Well, okay, let's go back and see what those numbers actually were. Okay. And then and then sort of and we're sort of we're looking at it. You're looking at that again. You know what? What makes a bike ride great? You mm -hmm. know, it's, and it's not always the stiffness numbers. And carbon has evolved massively from 2003 to now mm -hmm. between lug design and obviously tube shape and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. So uh, at that point, we're looking purely at a stiffness number thing. Yeah. And then saying, well, okay, well. It's like some of us were concerned that Tour BB was too low on the first Amanda. Mm -hmm. Well, really, in uh, 2003, Tour BB was lower than that. You know, and, and that was a bike that we had a lot of su success on. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, they weren't complaining it was too soft. So if if we go softer than maybe what we're comfortable with, you know, there's some idea that it, it won't be a huge deal, but. So actually, we were, we were less stiff than in previous models for that first mm -hmm. Amanda. Sure. Because um, stiff is not always better. Stiff is not always better. So we're all we're always constantly looking at the correct stiffness number, not just we increase it by five percent across the board. Yeah. Like that's not a, a goal. It's a if it if it ends up being stiffer, it's because that it actually rode better for that number. Yes. Right. Exactly. So like a exactly. stiffness test is always the end point. Yeah. Yeah. But how you get to the end point is very important. Yeah. Right, so that's where the corner model comes into play and it shows us the entire path of the load when a rider corners and handles the bike. It's just after all of our iterations with heeds and those thousands upon thousands of iterations that it produced, yeah. it just spit out, well, here's what true BB is. Okay, great. So let's see how it rides. And so that's where it sort of evolves. So we're not, we're not chasing those stiffness numbers as much as we used to. Okay. But technology is evolved. We're going to go and ride the bikes, and I'm sure we'll notice a little bit of difference here and a little bit of difference there. But in, in fact, what we the best um, feedback it has to be numerical. If you know what I mean, like a graph-based concept, just like what you're yeah. talking about with, when it comes to the feedback from the riders that you've yep. got to manage. Yep. Everyday riders or pro riders, it doesn't matter. Um, in other words, so if you were to ride a bike test, how would you do it? Would you do it with a graph and, and numbers or with opinion? I actually do it in both. Like the opinion adds context to the rating, mm -hmm. right? So when we do back-to-back um, -back comparison testing, we, we do do that. So like Peter was one of our testers in Salt Lake last year for this platform. Right. And we had two different, two or three different laminate, er, laminate iterations and we had a, um, the current Amanda as a baseline mm -hmm. and we always compare against current. And um, it's a, a score of, it's pretty much one through three, but I, I say okay. it's same as baseline, worse than or better than. Okay. Because I don't like the, the one through five. Like it's either a yes or a no. Yes. Don't give me a gray area of a of a three. Okay. You know what I mean? Like okay. so, it's very. I want that definitive. Is it good or bad? Is it better than or worse than? Okay. And then there's opinion involved into that, right? Like, it cornered, let's say, better than, and here's why. 
it climbed worse than and here's why. Yes. You know, and then it, within each section, um, I've divided a, I've divided up to cornering, I'm then descending, climbing, sprinting, and then comfort. So like, how does it feel in the saddle and in the handlebars or in the yeah. hoods? Yeah. So I take that and I split it up, and then actually each question relates to a little bit to a stiffness test. Yeah. If it's trek full frame, which is internal full frame stiffness, like out of plane. Yeah. Or if it's a tour head tube or tour BB or um, seat mass compliance, whatever that case is, those questions can relate to that to that number or that test. Yeah. So then we can say, okay, well, these riders like these questions or preferred the bike on these questions and then let's drive more towards maybe a tour BB number of this. You know, so then you can slice and dice and say, okay, can we make different stiffness test numbers be different? Yes. Um, but then also I do a heat map to show um, worse than, same as, or better than. And then you can zoom in, okay, now, now let's look at the details and why they they all pick this one thing. Yeah. And then sometimes it's, it's all, um, everything correlates to one side. You know, everybody likes that one bike. Yeah. Better than or worse than. And sometimes it's completely separate. You know, so then there you start getting into, you know, like, well, I like the front end descending, but I didn't like it climbing. And right. then the next person's the complete opposite. Yeah, exactly. You know, so right. then you have to pick your poison and sometimes we just go right in the middle. You sort of hit both camps, yeah. maybe not 100%, but it's still better than.